Hello everybody and welcome back, my name is Winback, and on today's episode of Heroes of the Storm, we are going to be playing the High King himself, his name is Varian, he is a tank, don't let anyone tell you different, and we're playing in Storm League. So we're on Infernal Shrines today, one of what I think is probably going to be Varian's better maps, and as always this is a YouTube video so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out. We're going to be doing four of these per week and we're probably going to be getting more into the Storm League side of things this season because I do want to find better games and as dumb as people can be in Storm League it's infinitely better than Quick Match so you may see more of these. I play Tank in Storm League so this is my comfy place. My apologies if Tank is boring but this is where we want to do it. So, Varian uh, with Taunt is going to be main tank potential so hard that everyone on your team should be watching you go in, silence someone, and then immediately blowing that character up. But prior to level 4, we're pretty weak. So, not only are we going to have less health than we will when we take our ult, we are going to be doing much less damage and we're not going to have any of the abilities that we need to really take the enemy team out. We traded me for an Olaf, which is fine because of how early in the game that we are, but since we have Leoric soaking into the Vikings, uh, anyway, we're not really losing a whole lot of experience, which is lucky for us because I would have been pretty upset about my death there <laughs> if, if we didn't have an offlaner doing such a fantastic job this early on. Spreading the bond, that's how we do it here. Oh, and everybody is so low. I just, I probably could have dashed to that Kael'thas and killed him, but I didn't want Tychus being anywhere near my hella low teammates to get a grenade on any of them. Oh, okay, it's fine. I can leave now. I'm gonna dodge that tornado. Completely on accident. So Varian's abilities are all incredibly simple abilities. They all do very easy things. Which is why he's so kind of lame without his ult. Um, but a lot of his abilities, being that they're so simple, can have really huge impacts with just a couple talents. Um, now, I'm going to get on my soapbox about our Q ability. It's called the Lion's Fang. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, everybody who thinks about this ability as peel or damage is wrong. 100% wrong, and you should never build talents around your Q with those ideas in your head. Now, why am I saying that? Why Why am I upsetting people watching the video who have opinions about Lion's Fang? Well, Lion's Fang slows people by 35%, and it's going to do a decent amount of damage. Those two things lead a lot of people to believe that it is going to be really good for chasing people or really good for peeling people. The chasing people part is fine. I'm not going to argue that I think Lion's Fang can be good for stopping people from running away, but peeling with this ability is absolutely pointless because even though it's an AoE ability, the line of the ability is so slim and so short compared to other abilities Hitting it consistently on targets that you need to peel, say, like, let's just use, for example, an Illidan. If you have an Illidan on your healer, and your only form of peel, because maybe you've already used your taunt, is your Q, you might as well leave that healer to die. Because you're never going to hit Illidan or Zeratul or any of those characters with that teeny tiny little hitbox consistently. It's just not going to happen. What you do want to remember about your Lion's Fang is that it is going to heal you for a flat amount uh, per target hit. So it's not only heroes, it is anything that you hit. We're going to heal for 46 at level 7 for minions, monsters, buildings, anything. Anything that we hit is going to give us that teeny amount of healing back. And you can imagine if we hit 7 minions in a line... So 7 times 4 is... Well, that's about 200 health back for 1Q into an entire minion wave. Um, take that and increase it when you hit heroes to... what? It's like almost 200 at this point. Yeah, 184 per hero hit 
you're going to get massive amounts of healing from Lion's Fang on clumped up targets, either heroes, monsters, minions, whatever. So specifically on Infernal Shrines, where there's all this fighting around um, the shrines with clumped up heroes, clumped up objectives, you can heal ridiculous amounts with your Q, and you can still blow people up with both your charge and your ult. So there's really no reason to have your Q do anything but heal you when you fall down below, you know, a significant amount of your health. That's where I will always stand with the uh, Q ability. You can chase people with it. That is a function it's possible of, or possible with, but it's your, it's your heal tool. If you're going to tank, you need to have health, you need to have a lot of it, and you need to have it on a significantly consistent ability. So aim for those groups of people, get some healing back, and now I'm done talking about it, he's gonna die to a grenade. Fuck. I can only stop so many people from chasing your Protoss ass down, my man. I am so sorry. Okay, there's a potion for Falstad, and Deckard picks it up. And now Falstad's gonna die to a grenade. Oh no, he died to a, an Anduin, an Anduin Divine Star, because <laughs> this Deckard stole his Kool-Aid. Great. Anyway, moving on to our W, which is by and large the most important part of playing Taunt Varian. Our W is called Parry. We are going to block 100% of the damage coming from auto attacks for 1.25 seconds, and we get two charges of Parry. So, when that is happening, a uh, character like Tychus, who has four autos per second, is completely useless against our character, even if he has his minigun up. Because we're blocking all of that damage, and we're making Tychus a sad boy. <sighs> I know, again, it's super simple. There's really not much else to it. The cooldown isn't super significant. He just fucked so much shit up with that Lornado. I just... Ugh. Sorry, I'm just going to keep getting distracted when I pay attention to all the dumb shit going on. But, um, right, anyway, that's, that's parry in a nutshell. Even though it's really easy to see what it does and see how it works, using it and timing it correctly is going to be very important for playing tank. So, specifically when you're walking up to a Tychus, or you want to, oh, like right now, gonna block all those auto attacks just eat a butt tychus there's nothing that you can do in Debarian. um so we need to have that that parry going right away to block as many auto attacks from him as possible and is going to help us with our talents which we're going to talk about here in a second but um it's going to significantly significantly increase our damage as well even though it's a defensive tool we're going to be using it offensively a lot as well now our charge is our E ability. We're gonna to dash to a target, dealing 80 damage and slowing them by 75% for one second. I know one second doesn't seem like a lot, but 75% slow is basically a root. So you're gonna hold someone in place just long enough to either taunt them or get some CC from the rest of your team on top of them. And then you're gonna just lock them in place with your ult. Um, and that's it. This slow is huge. The dash is very clear for your team to see you going in, but there's nothing more to it. It's just, it's charge. If you couldn't take away from the title, how really, oh my god, what a good shot. Um, just how fucking simple the ability is. Uh, maybe read more books? I don't know. I'm sure you got it though. I trust you guys. And now we need to get on the shrine. Uh, now, our trait is probably the only thing about Varian's kit that has the smallest amount of complexity to it in what it does. So, Heroic Strike is going to give Varian an empowered basic attack every 18 seconds. It's going to deal bonus spell damage uh, every 18 seconds, but we reduce the cooldown of the ability by 2 seconds every time that we auto-attack something. So... Realistically, you're probably looking at about a 12 second cooldown on this ability if you're auto attacking as much as is necessary with Marion. Um, 
So, reducing that cooldown is really important. And this part of Varian's kit is going to be where a lot of the damage comes. I don't know why you're standing here. Um, I am the tank. I have the large health bar, which means I could walk into places that healers should not be walking into. So, there you go. Um, but anyway... So, Heroic Strike, again, is where a lot of damage for Taunt Varian comes from, and that's actually going to take us directly into our talent build. So, our level 1 talent, I am going to be uh, very, very vocal about what we're going to pick here, because there is only one talent at this tier. There is literally only one. No matter what you are doing, uh, okay, I guess, you, you don't want to help me get out? That's fine. That's fine. I could dash to teammates, but um, if you don't want to, you don't want to help me do that. I'll, I'll let you just live your life, I suppose. I'm only the tank. I only need help sometimes. Uh, so overpower is the only talent, and I'm going to explain to you why. All that stuff that I mentioned about your Q earlier, about the damage being pretty pathetic and the, uh, you know, peeling for the ability being pretty useless is only going to be buffed by Lion's Maw, uh, and not even significantly enough for it to make a difference. So the damage that you're getting with Lion's Maw... Okay, is he... What an absolute fucking legend. Just full-on huge balls action guy turned his back to that explosion and said, suck my butt. Kael'thas. Holy shit. He got... Both the spell armor from Oracle and he got the shield from Archon. And all of that was enough to keep him alive because that man knows how to play Tassadar. Way to go, buddy. I want to play Tassadar now. I love that. But, um, anyway, back to what I was saying. So, ooh, and I can't save you from that, my friend. That looks like you're dead. So all that cool shit that you did is now gone. I can't do much else here. We can save false dead, I guess. Using our big body blocks and health bar to keep him safe with a shattering throw as well. Anyway, back to level one. Um, Lion's Maw only buffs the shitty parts of your Q, which is awful. Uh, and then High King's Quest takes so long to complete that you're basically going to get into the portion of Varian's kit that isn't going to be as good. So later on in the game, Varian is going to struggle a lot because he is extremely strong from levels... 10 to 19, but 20, he's going to fall off a bit, and uh, it is usually within that last couple levels of the of the game that you're going to be completing a lot of those quest parameters, uh, especially if you're playing in, in a ranked game mode, takedowns are not simple to get, you have to be very careful when landing auto attacks, and globes are pretty dependent on, you know, your team helping clear waves so you can actually pick them up. So, High King's Quest is just not, not the hotness. Overpower, what it does, now that I actually am focusing on talking about it, Overpower is going to reset your heroic strike whenever you block an ability with parry, or uh, block an auto attack with parry, and then... Uh, you're going to do 40% more damage with the auto attack that you land from Heroic Strike. So not only is it giving you a significant amount of burst healing, I'm going to... He's going to die. Nothing I can do to save him. Couldn't get in range to silence the Kael'thas soon enough. And Deckard is just having a time. Um, right, but Overpower... The reason that we've been able to do so much damage to Tychus is because he's constantly resetting our um, Heroic Strike uh, with the amount of auto attacks that he's just pumping into us while Perry is up. So, it's a significant amount of damage on Varian, and a lot of people don't understand that Taunt Varian deals a stupid amount of damage only because of Overpower. And I don't know why, it's just so hard for people to comprehend why those other two talents are shit. This is where I die, because I'm bad at aiming. I was trying to hit those two shrine monkeys with my Q, 
because the overkill on uh oh no there it is okay oh no none of the buttons work because i started the replay over it the overkill was 91 on that living bomb so if i had hit two shrine monkeys with my q we would have gotten 77 per monkey hit which means we would have gotten about uh 153 ish 54 154 healing back but I'm bad at aiming, and they were aggroed onto Tassadar, so I did. I did bad things, but it would have been cool. I mean, you know what I was shooting for anyway, right? <sighs> right. So, back to the talent build, because we need to get that out of the way at some point, I guess. This is a fucking variant video, right? You want to hear about things that happen. Taunt's level 4. We've already talked plenty about why that's the best talent tier. Victory Rush is kind of the talent that everyone sleeps on, and I have no idea why, because it's definitely better at least 75% of the time. On Infernal Shrines specifically, this ability, talent, is going to deal so much healing for Varian, and it's going to have the cooldown reduced so often that it's just mind-blowing that people will still pick second win. Um, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't see why, oh, the orc's dead. Nothing we can do there. He was trying to stop his team from eating a bomb, and he canceled his shit a little bit early, which put him in perfect range to die. But, uh, Johanna's got her indestructible up. She's about to eat it, and <laughs> she's gonna eat all my damage right before Falstad can kill her with the lightning and steal it away from me. So, haha, -ha, that's mine. Now we're gonna kill my son. Which always makes me feel a little bit bad. We're just gonna blow that shield off of Kael'thas real quick with the shattering throw. I don't think we're gonna kill him because I don't have any DPS follow up on top of me, but. Nope. Oh. Oh, yes. Tassadar. Just cupping the balls with the, t the shock ray at the very tip. Unfortunately, Falstad died to the Pyroblast. Not a whole lot we can do there. Really going to be up to Deckard to keep him alive, but you do what you can. You, you work with what you got, that's how it goes. Um, victory Rush, though, back to that. Every 30 seconds, Varian's going to get about 800 healing when we basic attack something, and this cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds whenever a uh, sorry, minion or a monster dies. So, Infernal Shrines... The monkeys count as monsters, and there's fuck tons of them. So when you're fighting on a shrine with Varian and Victory Rush, if enough of them die around you, and it's, you know, on cooldown, it's coming right back. So there's literally no way that you ever don't have healing with Varian with this ability on Infernal Shrine specifically, and maps that you're doing a lot of fighting in the lanes, where there's a lot of, like, minion fights, um... I mean, it's it's going to be absolutely ridiculous how often you will have Victory Rush back up. You can see it. I used it uh, once at the beginning of killing Olaf there, and it's back up by the time he dies because there's minions all over the place, and they're dying to lots of indiscriminate AoE damage. It is so good how good this talent is. I just... It, uh, now, you can see here, it's mercenaries. It doesn't work on these, uh, which is in the tooltip, which is fine by me. Whatever. It would just make it really easy for Varian to kill mercenary camps. Well, maybe not very easy, but he could do it without taking any damage. Um, but anyway, I, I don't really like Second Wind. 1% of his max health while below 50% health. Maybe you take this in, in maps where your objective fights are going to be really far away from minions and monsters. Um, but there are very few maps that I feel like that is going to be a thing. So, here we are. Now, oh my god. Can we kill the Johanna and keep the Leoric alive all at the same time? Falstad can. Falstad can just shred people from maximum distance with the lightning from the gods. I can... Okay. I, I can't dash to him if there's a wall there, but, you know, I... We almost got him. Good, tr good try, buddy. Good try. Now, our uh, ten talent. It's Warbringer. It's called... That's what it's called. 
uh, reduces charges cooldown by 8 seconds. So we're going from 12 seconds to 4 seconds. We're going to reduce the mana cost, which is good as well. We don't want to waste too much mana on the ability that we can just spam. And then we can charge to allied heroes. Charging to allied heroes, a lot less effective than charging to enemy heroes or other targets. But it can come in handy in some niche situations. Um, mainly what we're taking this talent for is the cooldown reduction. Because having the cooldown reduction means that we can engage more often. Uh, yeah, so our 13 talent tier, Shattering Throw. I'm sure you've seen it. Well, it's really hard to see, actually. But basically, Shattering Throw is going to explode shields. We're going to deal, what is it? 3,454 damage to shields. Insane, I know. Uh, and then passively, our auto attacks are going to slap for 200% more on shields. You can see Johanna right there lost her entire shield. She didn't have indestructible backup and just got punched to death by our entire team because she got baited into thinking that she was safe. Shattering Throw is one of the best counters to Johanna in the entire game. 100%. Now, our 16 talent is called Banner of Dalaran. This is the spell power talent. We're going to put a huge banner down and in the area, everybody's going to get 25%. No, it's just 20%. Increased spell power. So, that's going to let Falstad and Tassadar do stupid amounts of damage. And it's going to give Deckard more healing. Because, um, spell power is going to affect his pots. On top of that, once we hit level 20, we're going to be picking up Glory to the Alliance. Which is going to increase all healing effects um, of the people inside the banner by 50%. So, not only are Deckard's pots getting... 20% more healing from the spell power bonus, but everybody in the banner is going to heal for 50% more of that amount while they're in the banner circle. Uh, not to mention that at level 20, um, you know, with the increased healing effects, you're also getting 100% cooldown reduction. The ability is only 25 seconds long. It lasts 12 seconds. So you cut 25 seconds in half and you basically have an infinite duration banner. And it's amazing. You just slap that bitch down. Everybody gets spell power. Everybody gets healing. Everybody gets everything from your banner. And it is so good because it's such a support ability. Uh, but it makes your team extremely strong extremely 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 strong so take a character like leoric we saved him in that last team fight with the banner because not only was it giving him more healing it was giving him more spell power which means which means he's doing more damage which means he's healing more everything about him surviving with that less than 10 percent health is all thanks to the banner that we dropped directly on his face while he was standing in the middle of the enemy team it's awesome how good this talent and the level 20 talent are so 16 and 20 insanely strong if you have a sonya if you have a leoric if you have a thrall anybody who is really really good at self-healing they are going to have an infinitely better time in the banner and you can just plop it right down on their heads also going to make your healer pretty happy also going to make your ability damage dps players pretty happy too so the build again in case you need it it's going to be overpower at one Taunt at 4, we've got Victory Rush at 7, Warbringer is 10, Shattering Throw is 13, Banner of Dalaran is 16, 20 is Glory to the Alliance. I know this video ran a little bit long, I uh, struggled to get all that shit out because there's a lot to talk about with Varian's talents and his abilities because there seems to be a lot of confusion about how they work the best. So this is what I think. Again, this is a ranked game. This is the most efficient build I think there is for Varian in this slot. And do with that what you will. Not only is this the best build, but playing into the enemy team of Johanna, of Kael'thas, of Tychus was just too strong not to pick him up. Uh, not only that, but we got a lot of Anduin's uh, Leap of Faiths out of him just by dashing and taunting a character, which is a 15 second cooldown for an 80 second cooldown. Tell me that isn't the most efficient trading you've ever seen in your life from a tank. <sighs> but that's it for me today. I am going to be back later this week. Well, not later, tomorrow, uh, with probably... I've got a couple tank replays from Storm League, so we're going to talk about a couple more going on in that vein. 
They might run a little bit long on the end here, just so I can talk about everything that I think I need to talk about, but thanks so much for hanging out. GG's, and I will see you tomorrow.